Dear friends, any programming language that you learn, it is most important to understand what is a variable and how to use the variable. This is very important. Let me launch my Visual Studio. Yesterday, we have learned how do you create a project. So how do you create a project? You will be creating a project using the create new. Now for this, we can create a new project or you can use the previous project yesterday that you have created. I'm going to create a new project. And the moment you do it, it will ask you which template are you going to use? It is going to show you the last template you have used here. So we have used Windows form. I'm going to select that and I'm going to hit on next. Post that, let's provide an appropriate name for this. So this is variable understanding. Now the solution name, you can keep it as it is, or you can simply say solution. It's up to you. And then I'm going to hit on next. It is going to ask me the .NET framework. As per the last selection, we have gone with the A.O. I'll be leaving as it is and hit on create. Now you can see the black form has been created. In this one, let us drag and drop a button. Let us resize the button as per the need. Now this one, I want to see the property. I'll go to the property panel or else let me right click and open properties. And you can pin it as you need. Now the very first thing, the button. We are going to change the text here. I will say variable demo. And the same thing is going to appear here. Now every button, there is a display and there is a design name. So here it says button one. I'm going to change the design name to button and I'm going to say variable. Provide some appropriate name to the button. Now this is the name I'm going to use for coding purpose. Now the very first thing what we will do, we will double click on the specific button. Once you double click, it is going to show this window. I don't need the property panel. Let me hide it. Now you can see the public class form one because we are form is known as form one. This is the form. And below that, because I clicked on the button, you can see the event has appeared dot click button. You will always click, right? So the event is dot click. Now let's see what we can do about this. I'm going to first of all give little space so that it looks more neat and clean. Okay, now let's write. Now the very first thing what I will do, I'm going to create a variable. How do you create a variable? For this, the keyword that you're going to use is called dim. Now hit on tab. What this dim stands for? Dim stands for dimension. So what is the dimension is all about? Let's create a variable. Let's say I'm going to create a variable called first name as string. So that means I'm going to define a variable whose name is first name and this is a string type. String means your text. Now what happens? What is the meaning of dim? Dim stands for dimension. So what happens? This variable is created it's going to hold some value temporarily. Now, for example, if you type A, that is a single byte. For example, I'm going to type Rakesh, R-A-K-E-S-H, the six bytes, six characters. So it is going to hold certain characters temporarily. So dimension means we are saying in the memory, you should hold this variable temporarily with certain data. So Visual Basic is going to take care of that entirely. You don't have to worry how the memory functions behind the scene. All you need to know, dim is the keyword that you are going to use. So dim first name as string. So that means first name is a variable. And what is the type of the variable? It is a string type. Similarly, you can create integer type, Boolean type. There are multiple different data types of variable, which we are going to learn as we move forward. At the moment, you got an understanding. This is how you declare a variable in Visual Studio. Done. 
After that, what I'm going to do, I'm going to assign some value to this variable. So I'll say first, the moment you type, you will be able to see the variable appearing like this. You can hit on tab. And I'm going to give a space equals to, and I'm going to write or provide some value to it. Let's say I'm going to say Rakesh. Now what happened? The first name variable, this is the variable. Variable means it can vary, right? It can have different, different values. So right now I have provided the value called Rakesh. Now let me see how I can use this value. Earlier we have learned about, there is something called message box, right? We have learned about MSG box. There's also another way to do this. You can write message box. This is the class I can use. This is the keyword message box and in the message box once you type let me delete let me type it again message box and hit on tab do not hit on enter because it's going to bring the cursor down message box once you hit on tab what do you want to do with this so i want to type something so i will use two parentheses or the brackets and inside that i'm going to use this variable name that we have created first name i'm going to hit on tab so what happened now i'm using the message box to show this first thing now this message box method comes with something called show i want to show it so this is the new way of writing code the other old way was also like this right we have seen it message box and then within the bracket we used to we can also write something like this first name Okay, this is another way of writing. So there are two ways. I will stick to the new way. This is the more advanced way of writing things. So I'm saying message box dot show first name. So it is going to show me whatever data is there. I'm going to delete this in the variable. So right now, what is the data this variable contains? You can give a little space just to make it more clear. So the first name variable contains the data Rakesh. Now it is going to show. So let's run this code i'm going to hit on this okay now you can see the form has appeared on my screen and i'm going to hit on the variable demo the moment i hit the message box will be shown because that is how we have programmed it you can see rakesh now let's do one thing i'm going to stop this here let's say i would like to say good morning rakesh so how will i do it so for that all you do here use a double quote and write your sentence let's say good morning right and after that you want to show rakesh so what i will do i'll use a ampersand symbol this is how you concatenate or join two different values so good morning and then show rakesh now let's run and see how it appears click on variable demo and you can see good morning rakesh there is a small problem. Do you see there is no space between morning and Rakesh? These are all clumsy. There's no space. So how do I avoid this? For this, what I will do, I'll simply use a space here. Pretty simple. Let's run it again. There is two buttons. This is a debugging mode. This is simply, let's run it without debugging. So hit on variable demo. You can see now the message has appeared properly. Good morning, space. Rakesh. Clear? Now let's say you would like to add one more sentence to it. What I will do, I'll simply use another ampersand symbol and then within double quotes, I'm going to say, how are you? This is the second message I would like to type. Now let me run it again. Click on variable demo. And you can see the message has appeared. Good morning, Rakesh. How are you? But again, there is a problem, space problem. How do I fix it? For this, all I have to do, I have to use a space before it. Let's run it again. Variable demo. And you can see this time how nicely it has appeared. Good morning, Rakesh. Now, let's say I would like to have the last name also. So let's create one more variable. I will say dim dimension. I'll declare one more variable saying last name. Look at how I am using the variable naming convention. I'm using the Pascal case. That means every word of my variable starts with a capital letter. First, a name is another word. So I'm having the N in capital. Similar way, I'm writing last name. This is called Pascal case. The standard of coding this is one of the standard. Now I'm going to say as 
string the data type of this should be string that means it should contain the characters so what we will do i am going to say last name variable equals to and i am going to give my last name and how do you use it here so to use this last name variable i'll simply say last name tab and again do not forget to use the ampersand symbol do you see how it is written very good now let's run it and see how it appears now you can see it has given me same good morning rakesh kumar now rakesh kumar is single word how do you fix this what do you do here after the ampersand symbol i am going to use a double quote i'll give a space here and after that i'm going to write ampersand symbol so what is this so here i am using a small space so this is a text right double quote within double quote you write a text like you have written how are you similar way i am writing a space here now if you going to run you can see it will appear very nicely good morning rakesh kumar how are you let's say after good morning rakesh kumar you would like to put a date uh, put a full stop okay let's do that how i'm i can do it i'll put a full stop here after uh, this one right uh, last name i would like to put a full stop so what i will do you can use this one put a dot here and then there is a space do you see there is a space single space and you have written how are you let's run it so likewise you can experiment how you would like to really display so good morning rakesh kumar full stop how are you so now you have learned couple of new techniques how do you concatenate and how do you use a variable so variable is nothing but it holds a uh, data in the memory for for a temporary purpose now you would say rakesh what would happen if i am going to use these two variables and provide a different name let's do that let's copy these three lines okay what is the meaning of variable variable the value would vary every time you can put some other value to it so let's say instead of rakesh i am going to say deepa so what would happen in this case let's run it so if you click on this the first time it shown a message good morning rakesh kumar how are you okay you click on okay and then the next message if you see it says good morning deepak kumar how are you so what I, what is happening the variable that you have used that can be assigned dynamic values so here i have put one value and second time i put i am using a, another value so that way the variables can be used so you have learned various technique now there are questions what if what if i am going to copy this two lines and i am going to keep it maybe at the bottom will it work will it work no it's not going to work why because you are using a variable before even declaring it so if you highlight here what it says first name as string local variable first name cannot refer to before it is declared before you have you have created a variable you are using it that is not allowed so what you have to do you have to first declare and then use the variable so i'll just move it to the top is it clear so this is how you can do it now you can say can i keep this line the last name before the last name is used is it possible yes that is possible because you are not use the last name before it runs in a sequence first one second line third line like that so here it, when it comes to this line first you are declaring and then you are using so that will also work let's run it we can see it is working without any error however you cannot use this one below this see it is giving a error here cannot be referred before it is declared you getting it so the best practice of coding is to on the top you declare it so it becomes quite manageable and understandable when you are using code when you are going to write a lengthy code it is always a good practice to declare it on the top so that it is easy to use these variables for your programming so there are a lot of learning happen in this video let's learn something new in our next video